Dear friends, brothers and sisters in Christ, Psalms 104, 105 talks of how the Lord remembers his covenant relationship with us forever. He remembers his deep love for his people as a father, him as a father, we as his children. And he remembers his closeness, his intimate closeness to us, his oneness with us, no matter how out of his love he created us in his image and likeness in sharing his divinity the lord remembers us as one where he is our god and we are his people we are one with him and invites us to live as good children who enjoy the benefits of the father who listen to god's word and know the best way to live our life in freedom in happiness in joy and in love because every father would love to see their children children happy and because the lord remembers his love deep relationship with his own people in today's first reading we hear from his relationship with abraham from the book of Genesis, chapter 17, verses 3 to 9, where we hear the Lord relating with Abraham and all his descendants, including you and me, how the Lord relates with you and me. My dear brother, my dear sister, no matter what you are going through, just know that you are not alone and the Lord remembers his love relationship with us. He's with you, he's with me, in no matter the situation that we are going through. And so from the first reading, we hear of the, this deep covenant relationship Relationship that God has with Abraham. Abraham was so faithful and because he was so faithful to God, he trusted God, he entrusted everything in God, even when he did not understand. He listened to God's word. He opened his heart and his conscience, his mind, his heart to God's word in every situation of his life and he surrendered everything in God's hands because of this relationship, that bond, that oneness with the Father, because of our oneness with the Father, we also, we see Abraham is promised many things. He's promised to deepen this love relationship. He's promised and because he listens, he's one with the Father and he feels sustained and protected with the Father. And what are the promises that we hear in today's first reading, dear friends? First of all, we see Abraham bowing to the ground as a sign of submission, of surrender to God. And God looking at his bowing to the ground with his heart inclined to God in need of God's help and intervention. We hear God promises. And the first promise is, I will make you the father of a multitude of nations. Abraham learns from God the father with his generosity, with his love. And it is he, this love of God that Abraham is going to transmit to generations and generations, including you and me. God is able to see that father figure in Abraham. My brother, my sister, does God see you as a father? Does God see you as a mother? Does God see you and me as a friend? Does he see you and me as brothers and sisters, as one, as one family? Do we also see ourselves, among ourselves, as, as a father, children, as brothers and sisters, as friends? God was able to see in Abraham this father figure with a big heart. How is your heart? How is my heart, dear friends, in our relationship in the family at work? How is my heart? The big, best gift that we can give to others is that of being like a father to others, having a big heart that welcomes all as they are, that forgives all as they are, that journeys with all as they are. And Abraham was able to show this. And God promises him to be the father of a multitude of people for all generations. We are blessed to have this father of faith, a father who believes, a father who trusts in God and invites us to believe, trust in God and entrusting everything in God's hands especially our own lives, especially those situations that we do not understand in our own lives. We entrust them in God's hands and he will work it out together with us as we do the best we can. He will work it out for our good no matter the situations that we go through, dear friends. And one more thing what we hear among the promises is the change of names from Abraham, simple walker of God, or a great father, 
to Abraham, which means the father of a multitude of nations, a father with a big heart. And here the Lord is changing your name, my name too. Do we know the meaning of our names, especially the Christian names? Do we, uh, do we appreciate the Christian names that God has given us, those names of the saints who protect us, but whom we are invited to imitate their whole life because they imitated Christ? And are we aware of the beautiful names that we have received, especially the Christian names? Do I know the story of my name, the story of the saint that, hold, that I hold, like my name is Moses, the saint Moses? Do I, do I lift that expectation of Moses? Do you lift your expectation of the saint you chose, if it's Mary? If it is a Christine, if it is Joseph, if it is John, if it is Anthony, or if it is Emmanuel, um, or whatever the name, if it is Charles, if it is Jane Flores, do we live to the names that we promised? The names that we hold. Do we feel that we are we have intercessors of these saints, patron saints of us? Do we learn their story so that we read? And there's a lot we can find even on YouTube from the stories of the saints. Of course, not only of our own saints, but also other saints. There is a lot that we can learn from the saints. And saints prove to us that we can live our Christian life to the full. And so Abraham's name had a meaning, just as your name has a meaning. And we have to live to that meaning. And Abraham is the father of all the multitude of nations. And he changes from Abraham, from another way of living to a good way of living. Maybe our names, uh, we have been called by different names, which are not even ours. Maybe names like one who is never faithful, one who is always bad, one who is always speaking bad words, one who is always doing bad things. And today we feel, we open our hearts that God may change the names that they are branded on us those bad names we pray that we may change them from that bad name we have received maybe one is a, a drunkard or a drug addict or uh, is always a corrupt guy is always a bad guy the lord gives us a chance to change from that way of living those names they have given us in the society to good way of living and we have a chance today and the time to change is today even through the sacrament of reconciliation that is what helps us to change the change is not only of the name but it has to do with the way of living, the personality. When we say we are changing, we change the personality, our way of living from bad to good, that good which is good to us, but also good to others. Changing from the bad which hurts others and hurts us to doing good and being good that does good to us and good to others. This is what Abraham, once he, his name was changed, his only way of thinking and acting was only good news. It was only to be good news, to speak good news that reached the whole of the nations. To be a blessing. We can only be a blessing if we allow ourselves to change our character, our names, our personality from bad to good. That is when we become a blessing otherwise we are hurting others we are wounding others and that is never our mission our mission is to do good to others to be a blessing to others to speak well of others to do good to others that's what it means to be a blessing my brother my sister are you a blessing or you are a curse to others you do bad to others let us be a blessing always in our lives Another promise is that the Lord says to Abraham, because his faith, he says, I will make you fruitful. And because he said to Abraham and his descendants, including you and me, the Lord tells you and me that we will be fruitful. If you listen to God's word, if we are faithful, if we surrender everything to God's word and we walk together with him and with each other, if we continue with that deep relationship we have with the Father, we will be fruitful in what we say, in what we do. We will be fruitful in whatever small or big way, we will be fruitful. My brother, my sister, do I allow myself to be fruitful to others, to be more of, to give my best gifts and fruits to others so that others can also be filled with many blessings? Or I hold on to myself and I don't collaborate with the Spirit of God working in us. When I open my heart and I collaborate with the Spirit of the Lord, then I become more fruitful. I become more generous with the gifts that I've received, material, spiritual, I become more fruitful to others. Are you fruitful to others or you take advantage of others?
And the Lord continues that for generations and generations until our generation and forever, the Lord will establish that covenant bond relationship, which now even with the coming of Christ, it is in our hearts. That deep, that love in our hearts, that warmth, that spirit in our hearts, that oneness as brothers and sisters, where Christ reconciled everything and made us one and invites us to walk as one. And this is for all generations. The Lord promises. And when he speaks, the Lord speaks, he speaks and promises that he, he will deepen our relationship that we will be one with him as he is with us yes god cannot force everything to us that's why we have to open our hearts and be humble enough to always receive the many blessings and graces that god speaks to us and gives us even through our brothers and sisters those who are around us and another blessing another promise the lord gives is i will give you and your descendants a land you yourself the land where you are in the land of canaan meaning he will give us all a land forever the lord gives us a land and that's one of the gifts that people even in the ancient times even the jewish context we used to look at as one of the blessings was the land the many children from generation to generation and the lord promises abraham and you and me that he is there he will give us a land with everything not only flowing with milk and honey but also with everything and everything is there for us god has given us everything it's a matter of sharing this everything he has given us it's some, the only challenge here is that many people hold the things only for themselves and when they die they leave these things here instead of opening up their hands and hearts to reach out to others to share the blessings this is when we share the blessings then we are fulfilling this promise that god did that he will give us a land which has everything and when we share the gifts that we have then nobody will lack my brother, my sister, what do I do with the gifts that I've received? Do I share them with others or I keep them only to myself? The Lord invites us to open up and share whatever gifts with others so that we may continue to extend the blessings to others. We are only channels, uh, tubes through which blessings flow. The blessings reach us and we thank God for that. And we reach out to others with these blessings that God has given to us to make others also multiply the blessings and give to others as others give to others because they have received from others and we share this blessing and the blessings multiply like fire the lord insists and says we have to maintain this bond this covenant love relationship of god a love of our brothers and sisters and so that he blesses us even more from generation to generation where he remains our god and the and father and we as his children we are blessed to have a father like that who receives us as we are and accompanies us as we are. And from the gospel of today, from the gospel of John, chapter 8, verses 51 to 59, we hear of how Jesus speaks to the Jews. Remember, Jesus has been going around doing good. He has been attacked by many, many times. We imagine somebody is doing good, but they've been accusing him, looking for small mistakes. And here now he speaks again to the Jews who have been attacking him. And he says, whoever keeps my word, whoever acts on my word, whoever does what the good news says, will never see death. It means he will see life forever, even here right now. When we listen to God's word and act on it, when we love God and we love our brothers and sisters, we already live life here in abundance see? because that's what God in Jesus came to reveal. He came so that they can have life and have it to, in the full, in abundance, already here and now we already can taste life forever here and now. If we live in a good relationship with God and with our brothers and sisters, if we put the word of God in action. So Jesus speaks to the Jews in this context that in order to live forever, we have to listen to put in action the word of God. You see now what happens? You are doing good, you are speaking good, you are inviting people to do good and to be happy and to live forever. And we see now the Jews coming in and say, now you are possessed. How, how would you feel if somebody, you are doing good, now replies to you in a bit strong words like you are possessed. We feel like there's something wrong somewhere. And yet for you, you feel you are good. How would you feel? You are possessed and they say, Abraham, who lived a good life, died. Moses, who lived a good life, died. A prophet who came and spoke in God's name, died. You mean you are better than Abraham? And Jesus replies and says, Before Abraham was, I am. Not that I was. 
not that I will be, I am. This is I am means that Jesus was already present right from the beginning of creation before, remember, meaning he's God. I am is God. This is the beautiful thing to remember, dear friends, that we are dealing with God who lives in the present life. What matters for us, first of all, is to remember that what counts for God is my present state right now. If God calls me right now, am I ready? What counts for God is not so much the past that happened, unfortunately, but is make sure that I always make peace by reconciling, by making confession, so that my heart, my mind, my body, my whole life is always at peace. Meaning when I'm at peace, I have an energy that will drive me to do good things and to speak good words every moment. And that makes heaven already here and now when we are at peace. And so we see that Jesus here insists and says, before Abraham was, I am. He has been there. And for God, what comes is today. How is my relationship with God and others today? Am I at peace with God and others and myself today? Or am I at war with God and with others and with myself today? When we are at peace today, then we are ready. Anytime the Lord invites us and calls us back to his home, we will always be always with him in life because we are at peace with him, with others, and with God. And that's the most important thing. I am. Our God is the God of the present, of the here and now. Today, here and now, make peace with God, with others, and with ourselves. Today, here and now, be good news here and now. Speak good news. Be a healing medicine here and now. Today, in the moment of today. Then they picked up stones and started throwing at Jesus. Imagine you are doing good, you are speaking good news, you are challenging the people, you are encouraging them, and now they are picking good stones. I know how it would feel if you yourself also are doing that. I know there are many good people, even you who is listening to this, who do good, but only the only thing that people give you back is stones, stones, accusations, falsehood, things which could hurt you more courage don't give up just forgive them anyway even jesus forgave them just forgive them pray for them and this is what they picked up stones but what does jesus do when they pick up stones jesus first of all hides <laughs> and then after hiding of course he couldn't have hidden but he hides and he then from there he goes away from the temple meaning that when you are with people whom you have tried to act talk to you have tried to help them understand and they cannot understand they are hard-hearted when you have done the best to talk to them, to dialogue with them, to help them to be good, to do good, and you have done your best, and you realize their only intention is only to hurt you with words, with actions, even with stones, the only thing you have to do is, my brother, my sister, run away. <laughs> if Jesus could run away, <laughs> run away from such negative people before, before they contaminate you with their negativity. Run away. Jesus ran, ran away, and he went away. This is how we also miss the blessings. My brother, my sister, are you among those who stone others and discourage them from being good and doing good and spreading good news or you among those who encourage those who are spreading good news my brother my sister may the lord bless you as you continue being good news wherever you are and establishing the relationship with god and with each other and being in love with all amen greetings from jerusalem dear friends to you and your friends